Now that we're done running the analysis for the first run of our experiment and we've looked at the results, we now do the exact same thing to run two. So this is the feed setup for run two. All I've done is I've selected the next run, so in this case S006, A001, and I've changed the output directory to underscore run two just to differentiate them. But other than that, everything is exactly the same. And in stats, all I've done is I've loaded new text files, new timing files that now represent the second run. So everything is as it was for the first run. Now we're just doing it for run two. Okay. So after that's done, I'm going to reload feed here. And now what I'm going to do is do a higher level analysis. Now that we have more than one run, we can do a higher level analysis to collapse across runs and combine parameter estimates. So on this drop down box, select higher level analysis and select inputs our lower, lower level feed directories, which will be the default. So for number of inputs, just select the feed directories that are output after you've run your analyses. So here, output.feet, that's also run one, and output underscore run two dot feet and hit OK. And for lower, lower level co-PEs, so these are just parameter estimates for each contrast you did at a lower level. So for example, I know that contrast one, it represents the left minus right contrast. In this case, I'm going to select all of them, but if you want, you can select only a subset of them. And for the output directory, I'm going to select output subject underscore zero one. This will output a directory called this output underscore subject underscore zero one dot G feed, which stands for group feed analysis. In the full model setup here, I'm going to assign equal weight, an equal weight of one for each feed directory. That means that for all the contrasts that I'm conducting, I'm going to assign equal weight to both of these runs. Okay, hit done, and that's just a representation of what it's going to do. And that is pretty much it. And then for post stats, those can be a lot the same. Or you can change the Z threshold as you like. After you're done with all this, everything looks good, just hit go, and you will see a similar series of HTML files as you saw when we were running them individually for each run. So here I've already run the group level feet analysis, and this is what the report logs look like. So here again we have a log telling us every step that we did, what inputs we put into this, and again if you click on these, these go back to those HTML files that you looked at when you analyze each run separately. Our registration summary will show whether anything looks out of line. <clears throat> For example, if there is a large amount of red in this, that would be some cause for concern, be suggesting that the masks don't overlap very well. In this case, though, it looks fine. And same with this. Okay. If we go to results, we can see our group level results for each contrast. So for example, contrast left minus right, again I can look at the stats and I can look at the post stats showing any activation at a given threshold rendered onto the brain. Now that we're doing a group analysis, remember that these results are now warped to a normalized space. That wasn't the case doing an analysis at each run, but now that we've combined across runs, now we map those results onto a, a standardized template. So that's all there is to that. I'm going to go ahead and minimize that. And now if we want to look at the results in our GFeed directory, again we have this uh, output underscore subject dot GFeed, which I'm going to navigate into. And within here, for each of our contrasts, now we have individual folders telling us the statistics for each of those contrasts. So if I'm going to go into, say, cope1.feed, which again is a contrast of left minus right. Within there, as we saw before with analyzing each individual run, you see what pops up within the HTML files tracking your progress, such as logs, any log information, 
time series plots, and what's probably of most importance to you is stats. So within here, again, I'm going to open up FSL view. And now the first thing I can do is select file and open up a standard template. This is something that's already in MNI space. Um, if you look down here, you can actually see what space it's in. Here it's MNI. If it were in the original anatomical space, it would say anatomical. So on top of this, I'm going to add my contrast estimate. So I'm already within COPE 1, which is contrast of left minus right. Within the stats, I'm going to select zstat1.nii and open it up. All right, so I'm going to change this threshold to a lower bound of 1 and leave the upper bound as is. And here you can see at this group level analysis, we do see relatively robust results in the right motor cortex for this contrast of left minus right. So really that's all there is to carrying out a very simple group level analysis. If you had more runs, obviously you would run the same analysis we did for each individual run, for each of those runs, and then when you're finished with all your runs, collapse across them and run a group level analysis. In the next tutorial, we'll be showing you how you can save yourself a lot of time by automating this entire process through the use of FSL's design.fsf files.